birth control gives people license to express themselves sexually in a free manner, and many people are opposed to that. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie for Reason TV, and today we're talking with Peter Bagg, the great cartoonist. He's got a new expanded hardcover version of Everybody is Stupid Except for Me and Other Astute Observations, as well as a brand new biography of Margaret Sanger, the birth control pioneer called Woman Rebel. What made Margaret Sanger interesting to you? Well, everything about her is interesting. She's led an amazing life, and, uh, and also I'm very much in support of her uh, life's mission, which is... Uh, contraceptive information for all. Uh, you wouldn't think that at one point that was controversial, but it was something, it was a message that she was frequently imprisoned for. Also, uh, I very much want to do the book in part to correct some widely held misconceptions about her. Yeah, uh, because Margaret Sanger is obviously highly controversial even today. Uh, a lot of people say that she was in favor of eugenics, that she was a racist. What is the biggest misconception about Margaret Sanger and how do you address that in, the, in Woman Rebel? Uh, well, probably the first and foremost is uh, sometimes there's even a meme online that she is the quote-unquote inventor of abortion. And the surprising truth is that she was a lifelong opponent of abortion her whole life. Now, I myself am pro-choice. She never was in that regard. She always, for both moral reasons and medical reasons, opposed abortion. Um, the ironic thing about that is many of... Uh, these negative notions that are being perpetrated on the internet about her are being perpetrated largely by pro-life groups. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're, bas they're basically doing it to demonize the nominal founder of Planned Parenthood. So right, that's which really Sanger, Sanger, and it's more complicated, you get into it a bit in the book, she's, not, she's a founder of Planned Parenthood, of what became Planned Parenthood, but she's not in favor of abortion. What about the eugenics charge, the idea that she was in favor of sterilizing or keeping unfit people from reproducing? Well, that's a t really tough one to answer just because of the way um, eugenics over the last 50 or so years has become and increasingly is becoming very narrowly defined as almost, not almost, synonymous with fascism and Nazism and basically being in favor of killing or sterilizing people who were considered less than. And, and kind of like a state-based uh, program of who gets to re uh, pro uh, procreate and who doesn't. Exactly. Whereas uh, during the progressive era, especially in the 1920s, when the eugenic thought was at its peak, um, it, the, the, it was much more wide-ranging than that. There were very many people who did believe in it along very specific racial lines. Um, but basically the word means good genes, and it's, the idea was simply to, uh, in any way you could think of, it, in a wider sense it was all about improving the human condition, making sure the next generation is healthier and smarter than yours was. Many leading eugenicists at the time wished that she had nothing to do with eugenics or wished that she wouldn't try to ride on their coattails, which she was rather she was doing for self-promotional reasons. Mm -hmm. She wanted to give the birth control movement more academic legitimacy. She was trying to appeal, in her own words, I was trying to reach out to the men of science. Because back then, birth control, the entire subject was considered very sordid and unseemly. And, and, and it was essentially illegal in most contexts to distribute literature about yes. birth control. It was uh, disseminating information about birth control was completely illegal. The extent to which she... Uh, could be associated in any way, shape, or form with the now negative aspects of uh, eugenics is, and this is the most extreme thing I've ever read of hers, is that she wouldn't rule out forced sterilization in extreme situations. Mm -hmm. And extreme, in her case, would be, how she would define that, is a destitute woman who is, you know, like extremely mentally incapacitated, and neither her or her family have any way of raising a child. And yet without birth control information or, or access to it, she uh, would keep having babies that would become wards of the state by default. Still, she, she always would point out the slippery slope that that would lead to. So she, was, she would only talk about that when it was addressed. And it, this wasn't, uh, in the 1920s, this was not an extreme position to take though. In the book, you make a strong case that what Margaret Sanger ultimately was really about was sexual autonomy for all people, but especially women who were denied it. Do you think that uh, her goals have largely been achieved in today's society? 
Yes, to an extreme degree, absolutely, and all for the better. Uh, I, I'm sympathetic to people who are against abortion, uh, how they perceive of it as murder or, or some ki- type of murder. I can understand that. I'm sympathetic to that. But for an awful lot of people, too, their op- opposition to it is part of this um, much deeper-rooted opposition to birth control. And that has a lot to do with uh, wanting to control other people's behaviors. Birth control gives people license to express themselves sexually in a free manner, and many people are opposed to that. Oddly to me, it's it's all part of this strange compulsion that I would say most humans have to micromanage other people's lives. It's all about controlling other people's lives and denying them autonomy, just fearing that with that autonomy, they they would only do regrettable things. Thank you, Peter Bagg. The new book is Woman Rebel, the Margaret Sanger story. It's out from Drawn and Quarterly now in hardcover. There is also a new edition, a hardcover expanded edition of his great collection of reason work, uh, plus some Everybody is Stupid Except for Me. Peter, thanks for talking to us. Thank you. (laughs) 